GST, Goods and Services Tax. GST, that is Goods and Services Tax, was applicable in India from 2018. Prior to that, we had many taxes like sales tax, VAT, that is value added tax, service tax, excise duty, etc. Now, all those taxes have been replaced by one tax only, and that is GST. The main purpose for this was that in one country there should be one tax only, and it came to effect from 1st July 2017 to replace various indirect taxes with a federal tax. So, let us understand how GST is calculated and how do we solve the questions based on GST. Watch this video till the end to have complete understanding of GST and the calculations based on it. Now, Goods and Services Tax is the tax we pay whenever we buy goods and services. Goods means the products like stationery, groceries, machines, etc. And services means consultancy, repairs of machines, or electronic goods, maintenance, etc. Let's take an example. Suppose the GST rate is 10%. Then for every rupee 100 of the product, we have to pay an extra 10% of it as the tax. So, the amount we pay is not just rupees 100, but rupee 10 more, that is rupees 110. We have different GST rates for slabs for different products. But for our calculations, the rate of GST or actual GST would be given. So, we need not learn all those rates. Let us look at the different types of GSTs. Number one is CGST, that is Central GST. This tax goes to the central government. Number two is GST, that is State GST. This tax goes to the state government. These two taxes are calculated whenever the transaction is in the same state of the country. Third one, IGST, that is Integrated GST. This goes directly to the central government and is calculated whenever there is transaction between two states of the country. In order to understand the GST applicable, we must first know which type of sale it is. And there are two types of sales, the intrastate and the interstate. Intrastate is within the same state when the buyer and the seller are from the same state. And intrastate is from one state to another state of the country. For example, if A sells an article to B for rupees 100, and if the rate of GST is 10%, then B will pay 10% of rupees 100 to A. So, how much will B pay as tax? 10% of 100, and that will be rupees 10. And so, the price B pay is rupees 100 plus rupees 10, that is rupees 110. When both A and B are from the same state, then the state government takes half the tax and the remaining half goes to the central government that is the government of india that means from that tax of rupees 10 rupees 5 goes to the central government as cgst and the remaining rupees 5 goes to the state government as sgst but if a is from karnataka and B is from Gujarat, for example, then B will still pay rupees 10 as the tax. But because they are both from different states, the full rupees 10 goes to the government of India, that is the central government. And there it will be decided which state gets how much of that tax. So this tax is called as the integrated tax. We shall now learn two more terms input tax and output tax that is input GST 
and output GST. Let us understand with the help of an example. For any sale of goods, there is a chain of a manufacturer, a distributor, a wholesaler, then the retailer and the consumer. And so, the manufacturer sells the article to the distributor, distributor sells it to the wholesaler and the wholesaler sells it to the retailer and the retailer sells it to the consumer. For our understanding, let us say that this chain has three people, A, B and C. And let us say that the GST rate is 10% and A sells the good to B for rupees 100. So SP of A becomes rupees 100. Now, the tax paid by B will be 10% of rupees 100 and that is rupees 10. So B pays to A the price of good as rupees 100 plus rupees 10 and that is rupees 110. Now the tax that B pays to A that is rupees 10 becomes his input GST. When B sells the good to C, he will add his profit to it. And so, let us say that he marks the price higher by rupees 40. Let us say that he sells it to C for rupees 140. When B sells the article to C, he charges 10% tax. And so, C has to pay 10% of 140 and that is rupees 40 and that is B's output GST, that is B's output tax. But from this output GST, he has already paid rupees 10 to A, which has gone to the government and that is because of the first sale, right? And so B has to pay the remaining. How much is that? Rupees 14 minus rupees 10, which is rupees 4 as the GST, that is, the GST of B is equal to output GST minus input GST. So let's check. The first sale the GST was rupees 10. Second sale GST was rupees 4. So the total GST is rupees 14. And so this GST rupees 14 is what actually who will be paying the customer. Now look at your C. C is the customer, he is the last one in the chain. And so C is buying it for rupees 140 and he pays 10% tax, that is rupees 14. And so he actually pays rupees 154. So he is now paying 10% of 140, which is 14 rupees, which if you look very carefully, it is 10 plus 4. What was 10? 10 was B is input GST and what was rupees 4? It is the balance of the GST that is remaining and that we found by the amount B pays to the government that is rupees 14 minus rupees 10 that is rupees 4 which goes to the government as B's GST. Now if A, B and C they are from the same state then when B pays rupees 10 as his tax, 5 rupees will go to central government and 5 rupees will go to the state government. So we will have CGST equal to rupees 5 and SGST equal to rupees 5. And now when B sells it to C, C will be paying 14 rupees as the tax out of which CGST will be half of it which is rupees 7 and SGST will be the other half which is rupees 7. So you see ultimately if you look at the CGST paid by B it will be 7 minus 5 which is rupees 2 and SGST would be 7 minus 5 which is rupees 2. So total B will pay 4 rupees, 2 rupees to the central government and 2 rupees to the state government. So that is how we understand GST. Now in my next video, we will see how we solve the questions based on GST. As of now, I hope you have understood the concept well. Thank you for watching.